Hey guys, it's the History Nerd, and we're back with another exciting episode of Hearts of Iron 4. Oh, Canada. Uh, where we last left off, we finally began uh, motorizing our military, although as you can see, it's going to take quite a long time for that to come along. Um, we definitely do need to be increasing our civilian factories. I 100% agree with that. The reason I'm going for... Um, new naval dockyards is just so we can get a good start on the production of destroyers. Um, and even at three a year, I would obviously, I'd love that to be three a month. But I do think that it is absolutely correct that we should start shifting our focus over to... Uh, getting the getting the civilian factories up now we will be able to get a little bit of that going if we um, start going into construction efforts and we can get some more military factories too if we start going into armament efforts and I think that's gonna be where we're gonna throw in a bit more of our focus because as great as it is to get boosts to things like cruiser production I was a perhaps a tad hasty in pushing down that route uh, when obviously construction and infrastructure, probably a lot better to focus on. So we're going to shift gears ever so slightly towards that building up our industry. And there was a comment posted right before I started recording. It said, History Nerd, you should keep the Canadian Army volunteer based. The reason I've gone over to limited conscription is basically just to cover my ass. Well, I agree that from a roleplay perspective, it would be far more accurate to keep Canada as a volunteer army because, let's face it, we don't need to conscript. We're not that threatened from anyone. Um, I, like I say, I just want to make sure that we're covered. Am I going to push it past uh, limited conscription? Probably not. I don't necessarily think that we'll need that. Um, certainly not with just creating one or two infantry corps to send over. But... Uh, why did my train of thought leave my head? Well, yeah, we won't push it past limited conscription. Don't worry, I'm not going to go full-on scraping the bottom of the Canadian barrel. That seems far too ridiculous. Uh, what did we research there? I completely for Oh, infantry weapons. That's what it was. We might as well start researching the light tank too then. And we'll get started on that, which will be a nice addition to our forces, obviously. And at least with the uh, motorized divisions, I may add in a couple of light or medium tanks. Uh, what does the Canadian armor tech tree look like? Uh, it's pretty dull, sadly. But it's it's fairly basic. Every nation, it seems, uh, ends their light tanks at around 41 and shifts over to the medium. So I think it just makes more sense uh, to start researching medium tanks and making that the core of your tank force. Uh, obviously, for personal reasons, you can stick with light tanks for as long as you would like. But I think that's going to be the route Canada takes. Mediums. Basically, Shermans. Uh... <laughs> Or, yeah, it's probably going to be Sherman's. Let's face it. We get most of our equipment from down south. Uh, and what else? What else do we need to cover right now? I don't think we really need to cover anything else right now. Uh, as usual, we're waiting for technology to tick by. We're waiting for our motorized divisions to get built and trained. And... Ships, obviously. We're waiting on ships as well. Well, yeah, that's that's basically it. So sit back, relax, and I will be back when I've got something exciting to share with everyone. See you guys in a bit. All right, so we finished our political focus, and it's time to not only spend that political focus that we've got, but also pick a new national focus. So what we're going to do first and foremost is grab Vickers Armstrong. Again, of the two choices... There is absolutely no reason not to pick Vickers Armstrong. And then uh, we're going to start down probably construction effort because more than anything else, civilian factories are going to be helpful at the start. We can always shift over 
Did I not actually start that? There we go. We can always shift over civilian factories to uh, military ones or vice versa. So like if we wanted to say convert a military factory into a civilian one in Southern Ontario, we absolutely could, or we could convert and um, get some more military factories. But I think getting the civilian uh, economy up and running first would be a much better idea than dumping everything into military, mainly because of how long this is like. I mean, we've got three civilian factories when we can have 15 building a uh, dockyard in the St. Lawrence. So we should probably get those up uh, so we can build them faster and build other things too, which is important to be, be to be able to build things. Um, not much else has happened in the world. We've still got the split in Spain, although it certainly looks like the nationalists might be making a push for it. They've, in fact, they've taken Madrid. So, you know, it, we could see a fascist Spain here. We can check it out and see that both Germany and Japan have sent uh, volunteer forces to the nationalist Spanish. And... The Soviet Union has sent some forces to uh, the Republican uh, Spanish. So, yeah, the Civil War is definitely going on. Oh, and it looks like Italy finally beat Ethiopia. It only took them a year, so well done, Italy. Um, they got some equipment from it, and Italy was completely, totally annexed. Italy. <laughs> that would be a weird turn if Italy got annexed by Ethiopia. But it's the reverse. Ethiopia got fully and totally annexed. So, the world is... I guess it's not heating up. It's actually dropping. So, you know, things, things are afoot, but it's not enough to make the world concerned yet. But Canada knows better. Anyway, guys, I'll see you when I've got something more exciting to share. I really should check on things like uh, research before I put a cut in. We got the radio finished. We can finally have radios, which is nice. Um, normally, if I'm playing in Europe, I'll definitely want to get radar stations built up and operating. But again, because we've got the Atlantic and the Pacific protecting us, we don't really need to worry about radar installations. Um, so we will go for the mechanical computer because it's going to help us with research. And it leads into encryption and decryption and, and all sorts of other fun things that we can we can play with. So, yeah, there. Now I'll see you guys when we have something exciting again. See, see in a bit. All right, guys, strap in because we're doing more research. Uh, we got our closer support done. Now, one thing that I probably should have checked before coming up with this strategy in my mind was taking a look at our aircraft designers, because none of our aircraft designers actually give a boost to close air support. We've got heavy fighter and tactical bomber, we've got fighter and carrier fighter, we've got naval bomber and carrier naval bombers, and strategic bombers. No close air support. So while I am kind of tempted to go with de Havilland just because it's, you know, a name I recognize, I think we're gonna go with the Heavy Air Company, which is a horrible name for, for a company, but, um, we will get reduced air research time, which is good, and strategic bombers uh, increased, which is great, uh, because I'd like to also have strategic bombers uh, based out of England doing their thing. Uh, so we might as well head on over and start researching strategic bombers as well. And then when we get the political capital to bring in the heavy air company, we will bring in the heavy air company to help us out. Um, for the national focuses, you can see I'm already on to construction effort two. So my plan for the next ones is construction effort two and then armament effort one and two. So uh, my home province can get itself another military factory, which would be nice. And then we'll see if we want to get some infrastructure in. And um, if we're going to do that, quickly run down and grab the two research slots, I think would be a, a pretty good idea um, to get those in, you know, sooner than later. It's good to get your industry up uh, before focusing in on, let's say, cruiser development. I was a little ambitious there, and I do apologize for that, but hey, it's a new game. Forgive me. Uh, otherwise, I'm really just trying to fill some time while this 
builds up. And I guess if I wanted to make that a bit easier on myself, I could... Ooh, actually, what we'll do is we'll head over because there has been a development in the Spanish Civil War. We can see uh, the Republicans created a massive pocket down here in southern Spain, and they're slowly closing it in. So the Nationalists taken a, taken a little bit of a hit in the south there, and Madrid has been recaptured. So... The war may not be as over as I assumed it was. I'm guessing the Soviet Union volunteers finally showed up and are assisting the Republican Spain or Spanish in their quest for fighting off the fascists. Um, other than that, hasn't really been too much going on. We could check out way out in the east here, but I don't think Japan has started anything yet. Uh, they've just sent volunteers and they're controlling obviously the puppet state so you know that that's really going to be the next area that blows up most likely uh and you know i mean the spanish civil war can end quickly or it can drag on for years so we'll see how that develops without influence from myself the player and we will quickly go ahead and grab the heavy aircraft company get ourselves a little bit of boost in everything heavy aircraft ability that doesn't even make sense does it you know what i better come back when i've got something more exciting to share instead of just me rambling on see you guys in a bit the german passenger airship hindenburg was destroyed today while attempting to dock at the lakehurst naval air station in the united states for reasons not yet determined the airship was engulfed in flames and crashed to the ground claiming 35 lives Due to the scarcity and expense of helium and the U.S. ban on exporting it, the Hindenburg, like all German passenger airships, was ultimately engineered to use hydrogen, which provides greater lift, but is also flammable. With public faith shaken by this disaster and the rise of much faster passenger aircraft, this could spell the end of the era for airships. Oh, the humanity! Oh, that's too bad. Airship travel always appealed to me. Because it seems, it, I mean, it just seems luxurious, you know what I mean? Like, gently floating through the skies. Mm, lovely. Uh, we will boost our production of the uh, Ottawa class. We will uh, oil one. One? Damn. That sucks. Because we're going to have to trade an entire civilian factory to get one little unit of oil in and we're exporting one unit of oil who are we exporting that oil to out of one oil we have one left for export oh, okay well i guess we'll just have to increase that there we go and what we will do is just start building up our civilian factory infrastructure so if we take a look obviously southern ontario here is going to be the area where we're going to focus in on that, but of course, the rest of the country can get uh, upgrades as well. And in fact, we can take a look at just, you know, how many the rest of the country can get. Unfortunately for the prairies, it's not much. Same as Northern Ontario. This is really going to be our um, production heartland here. So we might as well get one queued up in the St. Lawrence Seaway as well. And how close, how are we looking? We're five days away from Light Tank 2, which is great because I think we've just fulfilled our production on Light Tank 1. So we'll have new tanks to give everybody. Uh, I've shifted production around a little bit and I'll probably have to shift it back, but I want to get our motorized divisions going uh, as quick as we possibly can because, you know, that currently is what we're spending most of our development or most of our production on uh, let's get ourselves a new something we'd probably take a look at maybe boosting our artillery that might be a good thing to do we don't have any brigades currently using artillery but that will very likely change in the future and methinks that's it so I'll see you guys when something more exciting comes one thing I should mention uh, while I'm thinking about it, because Light Tank 2 was researched after we had selected um, the, what is it, the Vickers Armstrong Company, now we can see that this tank is designed by the Vickers Armstrong Company, 
And so we're going to get the bonuses associated with having them design our tanks. Victory for Canada. Huzzah. All right, guys. I'll see you guys when something else happens. The famous aviator Amelia Earhart, known to many as Queen of the Air, has completed a flight around the world together with her navigator Fred Noonan. After a brief scare when the pair temporarily got lost while approaching Howard Island in the Pacific, the flight proceeded without incident and this morning their Lockheed Electra touched down in Oakland, California. A ceremony is to be held in the White House next week where Earhart is to be personally congratulated for her feat by the President. Quite an achievement! Not much else has happened. So, you know, I just felt that, hey, Let's read some of the newsreels. We can check on the Spanish Civil War, and it looks like certainly the Nationalists have turned things around in the south. And uh, aside from a couple of pockets just north of Madrid, have definitely pushed the front line further east. So, fascist turnaround? Could this be the beginning of the end of Republican Spain? Who knows? Only time will tell. And we'll find out soon when something exciting happens. See you guys in a bit. All right, so we've got Alberta finished up with their armament effort, and we are now going to be focusing in on getting Southern Ontario, another military factory. But while we wait, let's get ourselves a new production line going, because we also need some close air support aircraft. So we'll get those guys set up, and when the... Um factory is done in southern Ontario. We'll toss in another one there and we should be good. Now, I do have two factories producing trucks even though our total is fulfilled mainly because I'd like to build up a bit of a stockpile of these guys and um you know, for for being able to dump it into having more units produced when I feel like it's time to get more units produced. You can see already we're going to be producing 11 aircraft a year, which is next to nothing. So it's a good thing we're gonna be getting some production efficiency and another factory in on getting those guys produced, but we should be able to uh, start getting the Canadian Air Force up and running. Japanese and Chinese forces have skirmished inconclusively over the strategic Marco Polo Bridge located just southwest of Beijing. China has rejected Japan's demands for an apology and territorial concessions, claiming instead that the breaking point of Japanese aggression has been reached. Diplomats fear that the volatile situation could result in war at any time. So things are heating up out east, which is exciting, and you can see the Japanese have a border right up against Beijing. So that could be quite the fight in the future. Unfortunately, our only vision in the area is provided by Hong Kong, and we're not going to be able to see much going on there. Other than, of course, borders changing. Heading back over to Spain, the uh, nationalists continue to push east, and in fact, they've taken Valencia. It looks like they might be fighting for it, but uh, currently it's in the hands of the nationalists, so Republican Spain is split in twain. Uh, on that note, I'll see you guys when something more exciting happens. Ooh, one other neat thing. We have three Ottawa-class destroyers, the Vendetta, the Voyager, and the Water Hen, all set and ready to go. So that's pretty darn exciting. I don't know what I'm going to do with these two guys here. Um, if I can, I'd be okay selling them to, like, maybe England. We could send those guys over as part of a Lend-Lease to help them out. But uh, I don't really foresee me using those destroyers for much other than maybe right away getting into convoy escorts. And as you can see, we have quite a few convoys sitting around remaining unused, but that won't stay the same. And in fact, I can probably foresee us producing some more convoys in the future, just to make sure we've got supply lines and abilities to transport troops all the way across the ocean uh, over to Europe, because we're going to need to do that. Anyway... On that note, I will see you guys later. See you in a bit. All right, so we just finished our research into strategic bombers, and I feel like it might be time to start taking a look at air doctoring that we might want to uh, focus in on. So we got three choices. Obviously, we've got strategic destruction, battlefield support, and operational integrity. So uh, each of these kind of factor into uh, bombers and to a lesser extent fighters, some more so than others with fighters like battlefield support. You're going to get um, a few 
things that are directly related to fighters, of course, you're going to get those with pretty much every one, I guess. So I stand officially corrected. What we are going to focus in on, though, is we're going to focus in on strategic destruction. Achieving air superiority will make it more difficult for enemy bombers to be used against our country. Well, we don't really need to worry about the fighter detection rate going up. However, getting into infrastructure destruction or home defense will probably go infrastructure destruction, honestly. And um, continuing on down into that line might not be a bad idea at all. I'm also reconsidering uh, not going after a fighter focus, but I think we should be okay. Like I say, we're, I'm kind of banking on the RAF, keeping the skies clear so our Canadian bombers can fly in and do their thing. We're very close to training our last truck, and as you can see, I've already done away with the cavalry. So we're getting close to dropping these guys in. You should be done any day now. There we go. Uh, so let's take these guys, and there's a very easy way to add new units into army groups. So all you do, you select all the units, and you can see that they're unassigned. If we were to box select units that are included into the first army here, we can see that, you know, these guys aren't assigned to anybody. So we'll just take these guys, and then we will right-click on the army we want them to be assigned to, and magically, now they're assigned to an army. Makes things incredibly easy to uh, keep your armies focused correctly. So now that we've got our cavalry replaced with trucks, we're going to want to take a look at getting the uh, Canadian army here up to a whopping 24 units because um, that's the most a general can have. Now, field marshals, like I've said before, can field as many units as they want. But because we are incredibly limited on our leadership, uh, of course, we could always recruit more, but there's not really a need to do that at the moment then, um, you know, I think keeping the units at a size of 24 is going to be a very good idea. So, to do that, we're going to want at least one more truck unit, if not many more. Uh, I'm thinking probably 50-50. So, if we take a look, I believe we've got eight units of infantry and five units of trucks? Am I right in that? Let's just actually double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Beautiful. So we're going to want a 12 and 12 split. So for those of you who can do simple arithmetic, you know what we're going to need here. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Perfect. And um, we'll drop those guys into southern Ontario. We'll worry about getting the trucks up in a bit. I'm totally fine with the idea of building up a stockpile of the motorized units before we start sending those guys in. And uh, for those wondering, you know, you don't have any tank units, history nerd, where are these tanks going? They are a part of our infantry. So our standard district militia units come with a unit of light tanks attached to them. Which is pretty darn handy if you ask me. Now, we're going to need to go ahead and get ourselves a few things here. We've got some political power to spend, we've got a new national focus to pick, and we've got a free military factory. Well, that's going to be the easiest one first. We're going to get those going into close air support. Then, we're going to want to pick a new focus, and I don't know if we necessarily need to get infrastructure going on. I guess we could get some armament going in um, Vancouver Island. That might not be a bad idea. Let's just double check to make sure we don't want to start getting a bit more military focusing going on. And honestly, I don't think we do. We're going to want to snag that military factory in Victoria. Or I guess Vancouver Island, technically. I'm going to call it Victoria. Because reasons. Let's take a look at maybe some... Daily Democratic support. I don't think we necessarily... Maybe maybe we'll just get R.B. Bennett in here to get us some political power gain so we can start making changes more often. Oh, and look at that. Japan has declared war in the East. So they'll be pushing against China soon as well. And there we have it. The East explodes and World War II arguably has started. 
Uh, if we take a look over in Spain, the nationalists are doing incredibly well. However, interestingly enough, they're having issues holding on to Zaragoza. So they've got most of the country, but now we've got the two capitals within spitting distance of each other. And uh, yeah, Zara Zaragoza here is potentially under threat of at least getting cut off, if not being uh, completely captured itself, which would be disastrous for the nationalists, to say the least. We've got our artillery done. Might as well take a look at perhaps getting the next land doctor in tech. That's 270 days. I think we can do a bit better than that, don't you? Uh, we're in September. So would we want to toss these guys in yet? I mean, it might not be a bad idea. Or it's also probably a good idea for us to get something like maybe a signal company, which will help out with our trucks. So... Here we have it. The Canadian Army is slowly getting modernized. Our Navy is actually starting to look, you know, sort of half-decent, um, in a way. And that's pretty much all that's going on. Uh, what do we got? We got two factories building up our close air support, which is good. Um, and yeah. That's pretty much it. So I'll see you guys when something more exciting happens. See you in a bit. All right, so we've got our military factory up in Victoria, British Columbia. We will slap that factory into producing rifles for everybody, and it looks like we're going to need to snag ourselves some more steel, which means even more. Cancel all resource imports. Mm, I don't know if we need to cancel the imports, but I'd like to cancel the exports. Because, uh, you know... We really shouldn't be exporting that. I wonder if that'll just take care of itself. Basically, at this stage, I don't necessarily want to be uh, <laughs> using up all of my civilian factories for trade. Because currently, that, we're getting kind of close to that. So, you know what? Maybe we'll just leave the, ins the insufficient resources for now. And maybe that'll fix itself up in the future. In the meantime, I think we're going to continue on down into our infrastructure and construction efforts. We'll get ourselves some infrastructure built up in New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. And then after that, we can focus in on getting some more construction efforts going on to civilian, two more civilian factories in Alberta. Yes, please. And get some more infrastructure going on as well. Maybe we'll hit those research slots as well. However, we are in December of 1937, so while this game isn't necessarily railroaded, we're certainly getting closer and closer to war. As you can see, the world tension is increasing every day. Well, not every day. That is hyperbole. Anyway, checking in on Spain, uh, the northern, or the northern, the nationalist Spanish have uh, pretty much secured Zaragoza, except in the south. Uh, but they've certainly done a good push up around here. And I'd say Republican Spain, your days are numbered. Checking out how things are going over in the east. Uh, the Japanese have done a little bit of a naval invasion over here. and are pushing in through China in two places. And um, their puppet is doing their thing. However, it looks like China, China's not lying down. And we've even got the People's Republic of China starting up because, hey... We need all three factions represented over here. Who knows what direction things are going to take? Uh, only the future does. On that note, though, guys, I am going to leave today's episode here. Kind of a short one, but uh, there's been a lot of dead time in today's episode. So tomorrow we'll continue on and uh, keep pushing Canada towards war. So, thumbs up if you have enjoyed today's episode. Leave your comments, questions, concerns, thoughts, jokes, musings, what have you below. Thank you all very much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.